Okay, so we have set up the Audio Technica mic so that it's obviously being seen by the computer. I've got it set to the input and the output, and uh, it's all happening, and I'm listening through my headphones. So I have to do one more thing before I launch Pro Tools, and uh, that is to uh, go into something called Audio MIDI Setup, which is an application that is in your Applications folder, and it's in your Utilities folder, and you'll see it here, Audio MIDI Setup. Open this application. This is a slightly more sophisticated audio setup utility application for Mac OS. Now you'll see in the audio MIDI setup that there is a list of audio devices. The Audio Technica is listed here as two devices and it actually has one device for the inputs and one device for the outputs. But to use it with Pro Tools, we are not going to select these two devices. We're going to use something called Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. is a virtual sound device that lets you combine multiple sound devices, either actual physical ones or virtual ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. to set up to work with the Audio Technica mic. So in order to do that, you'll see here that there is a list of devices and you'll see that the Audio Technica appears twice. But if you look a little bit more closely, the first time it appears, it's listed as zero inputs, two outputs. And the second time that it appears, it's listed with two inputs and zero outputs. So one's the output side and one's the input side. So we don't have to worry about that too much other than the fact that we just select both of these in our aggregate device. And then what that'll mean is that when we actually start working in Pro Tools, that both the input which is the actual microphone and the output, which is the headphone jack or the audio interface, both of these will be seen in Pro Tools. So that's all we need to do in the audio MIDI setup application. So as long as it's checked and you'll see that drift correction is automatically checked for one of these, just leave it, don't change that at all. Okay, so we've now got audio MIDI setup correct. And so we just want to open Pro Tools and we're going to just have a look at setting up Pro Tools to use the aggregate device in the playback engine settings. It will take some time to load, so we're just gonna speed this up. So I'm just gonna create a new session here and I'm just gonna call it AT Setup and, whoops, Setup and Test. And I'm gonna create it on the desktop of my computer and I'm gonna have it set to 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and go create. So that gives me a blank Pro Tools session. Now, before I do anything, I want to set Pro Tools so that it uses the Audio Technica as the microphone input, but also as the audio output to my headphones. So I do that in the setup menu and I go to Playback Engine. And here in the Playback Engine drop down menu, I want to choose Pro Tools Aggregate. IO. I do not want to choose any of the Audio Technicas, it's a little bit counterintuitive. I want to choose Pro Tools Aggregate IO. So it will automatically save and reopen your session if you click yes. When it reopens, it will be set to the Pro Tools Aggregate IO playback engine. And that's correct. Okay, so while we're here, let's have a look at our IO setup, which is where we can see all of the inputs and outputs associated with our hardware and our playback engine. So if you look across these input and output tabs, you'll see two inputs and two outputs. Now the two inputs seems counterintuitive because it is just a mono microphone, so it's not actually two, it's one analog audio source, which is a microphone, but it is running through a stereo analog to digital converter. So that's why it appears as two inputs when it's really only one mic. We won't worry about that for the moment. In the output tab, you can see it's got out one and two. And then in the bus tab, you will just see uh, it will have out one and two mapping to output one and two. And then it will just have a list of default buses. If it looks anything different to this when you've got your machine, just hit the default button and it will set it 
to look like this uh, if you need it to. So anything other than this, hit default. So we're at uni, we have named outputs one and two as the main outputs. So we can also do that on your home machines if you just follow this procedure. So you see where it says um, uh, output one and two in the buses tab. If I just go and call this main output one and two, then that's going to appear as that name in my Pro Tools mixer. It's not necessary to do this, but it is quite helpful because it just alerts you to the fact that these are the main two outputs that you are using to create your mix. That's set up. So let's now do a test recording by creating an audio track. So what we're going to do is to go up to Track, New, and we're going to create one. It's going to be mono because it's just a single mic, okay? Don't choose stereo, mono, and it's an audio track and we're just gonna give it a name and we're gonna call it Mic Test. That's created a mono audio track. You can see it's just got one mono meter there and we have to set the input and the output of that track. We do this with the audio input path selector. We can choose either one or two. As I say before, the mic is going to both of these but it is only one mono source. So I'm just gonna leave it set to input one. Okay, so that means if I input monitor this, or if I record enable it, so input monitor first. So it's now looking at the input uh, of the uh, microphone coming into Pro Tools. Okay, remember that the audio level is only controlled by the sound control panel here. So I'll get sound up. So if I'm wanting to change the level, uh, let me turn it down here. And back up again here. This is how you set your record level. Okay, uh, if you are clipping here or if it's too soft, you need to actually use your sound control panel on Mac OS to turn the microphone up or down until it's metering at the right level. Okay, so that's why I say, look, it's a good idea to have that popped out. So let's try recording something. What I'm hearing at the moment is uh, I'm getting a double through my headphones. You won't hear it on my screen capture, but I am hearing it on my headphones because what's happening is I'm listening through the microphone into Pro Tools and it's coming back into the audio interface and coming into my headphones with a slight delay. So I'm getting it twice. So if I go to options and I turn on low latency monitoring, that will kill that return back to my headphones and I'm only going to hear it once. So it completely fixed my headphones. And then I just use the control on the front of the microphone to balance between my audio input from my mic in my headphones and when I eventually get that far, the audio playback from Pro Tools. So that blend in my headphones. So let's go and record something. So we record enable the track and then we record enable the transport and hit play and then we'll be uh, recording once it does its count off. So here we go. I am just test recording in Pro Tools and this is the Audio Technica AT2020 and it's just a recording test. So we'll stop it there and play it back. Okay, so take it out of Record Enable and let me just play it back. So here we go. I am just test recording in Pro Tools and this is the Audio Technica AT2020 and it's just a recording test. So we'll stop it there and play it back. Okay, so you should be hearing that in your headphones when you're playing it back. If you're not hearing it playing back out of Pro Tools, the chances are on your microphone, you haven't got it turned towards computer blending into your headphones. You might have it all the way over on mic. So make sure you have that sort of blend somewhere in the middle so that when you're playing back stuff out of Pro Tools, you're actually hearing it in your headphones and you're not just only hearing your input from your mic. Okay, so, uh, and then the output of the track, uh, it's only one place for it to go because it is just a stereo audio interface because it's just feeding some headphones. Uh, it just goes to main output one and two. Okay, looking at it from the mix page, it's the same deal. So it is uh, input one that we were selected to and then main output stereo one and two. Okay, so there we go. 
uh, that's all there is to it.